Today's sponsor is Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Visit audible.com slash ZachGeorge for a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook too. Does your dog behave appropriately on a leash? Tell me in the comments below because in today's video, I'm gonna try and give you some tips if your dog tends to bark out or act out towards other dogs or people or bicycles or cars or anything like that when you're on a walk. Dogs tend to be reactive on a leash for a couple of major reasons. Uh, usually it's because they just are frustrated and they want to get at something to go investigate it or play with another dog or do something like this. This is so often misunderstood as aggression when really it's just a dog being curious, wanting to go up to something. Nonetheless, they still need to know that they should behave appropriately and there's a time and a place for that. I'm going to show you in this video how to get some traction with your dog and build communication with them when they're in this heightened state of mind. Since being on a leash is somewhat unnatural for a lot of dogs, especially in the beginning, many dogs feel more vulnerable when on a leash and tend to act a bit defensive too. So the first thing to understand is why is your dog acting the way they're acting when on a leash? Uh, I should state also, this is very common behavior for very young dogs or dogs new to a leash or dogs new to a new family or environment. So be understanding of that. This is a pretty advanced concept for a lot of people to understand generally. However, I'm going to make it very easy to understand for you today as I try and do in all of my dog training videos. Make sure you're subscribed and click thumbs up for this video as well. Now, since you've spent time with your dog, you can probably see the behavior coming. Most people can. That is the time to address it. The best time to correct your dog acting crazy when they see a distraction while walking them, whether it be a dog or vehicle or whatever, is to correct the behavior before it occurs. This whole idea of preemption uh, takes a lot of practice, but you'll get good at it as long as you're focused on it and really giving all of your attention to your dog. Now, traditional dog training has always focused on correcting this uh, with the choke chain or a prong collar, and most recently, the shock collars are a real common way to correct this. Now, of course, these are highly unethical and should never be used. Nonetheless, it's very common, which is why I'm going to address it in this video. You see, waiting for the behavior to occur to then correct it is about 10 times less effective than correcting the behavior before it happens. We want to suggest to our dog, look, I know what you're thinking. I want your attention on me. And if you listen to me, great things are going to happen for you. Dante the Schnauzer is a really good example of what a lot of you might be dealing with with your own dogs because he's young. Uh, there's not a lot of existing communication yet because he hasn't gone through a lot of training yet. So this is to be expected. The first thing we wanna do is break their attention on whatever it is that's distracting them. That can most easily be done by using real turkey or some type of real meat to break their attention and bring it on to you. This would not be a long-term strategy, but rather a place to get a little bit of traction so that we can get their attention onto us and back into training mode. This will not always work. It didn't work with Dante the Schnauzer, for example. So we have to do whatever we can to get their mental state off of whatever it is that's making them act in this manner. That might mean actually picking them up to calm them down. Some dogs feel more calm when they're picked up. Again, we wouldn't do this long term, but in the very beginning, it's fine to do this. Never do we attempt to fix a behavior or teach a new concept all in one swing of the bat. It's all done in little bits and we have to be very focused and mindful that our dog learns a little bit at a time. Now, after doing this for a minute or two, Dante did calm down and we were able to get him back into training mode. Very often this won't work, so our next step is to create distance between our dog and whatever it is that they're distracted by. This may mean retreating and immediately getting as far as we can away from that dog who's walking towards us down the street. Not just stopping. See, this is where most people go wrong. They may stop, they may try and get their dog's attention, they may pull back on the leash, maybe they'll even get down and try and communicate with their dog, but to no avail because their dog is so overstimulated. Again, that might mean having a dramatic distance between you and whatever it is that they want to get at. Cameron and her dog Charlie illustrate this beautifully. Now, I've actually shown you this clip before, but I think it's worth revisiting because this is such a wonderful example of how to communicate with your dog rather than 
dominate your dog. Um, you can see Charlie would often bark at other dogs in the class because he was unsocialized as a puppy. At least that's what I think, given his background. But many people would consider this aggression when really he just doesn't know what to make of those dogs. That's on us to teach our dogs rather than simply trying to get a quick fix with them. Cameron does such a good job at communicating eye to eye with her dog. Again, she knows her dog. She knows her dog is likely to react well when she gets into his area as you would want to make sure of with your own dog. But she's able to reason with him while in this heightened state of mind, which is not always very easy to do. Communicating with Look at that, do you see how she got him back there? This is what we should aim to do with our own dogs. Now this takes a little bit of practice and it requires your timing to be very, very good. You need to correct your dog upon the thought entering their mind that they want to bark at whatever it is they want to bark at. Again, this takes practice, so be patient. Many people think that an animal's emotion isn't as sophisticated as a person's emotion. A, a recent book I've listened to from Audible is Animals Make Us Human by Temple Grandin. Now she is autistic and she says she thinks in imagery and she believes that animals think in a very similar way. I found it to be a very thought-provoking book. I think it's a good read for sure. You can check out that book or any other book for free at audible.com slash Zach George. We're also giving a free 30-day trial. So I think it's a wonderful service. I'll let you decide whether you think it's for you, but at least check it out and let me know what you think. I've actually been an audible.com subscriber since 2010, long before they were a sponsor of my videos. It's hard for me to get my reading time in, so I need to figure out a way to multitask and get books into my brain when I'm doing other things, when I go to the park or when I take the dogs on a walk. I think it's an amazing, amazing deal. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like me on Facebook too, at facebook.com slash thezachgeorge. Tell me how your dog behaves on a leash in the comments below, and I will see you guys later on with a new video.